Don't you dare be sour. Listen to this podcast and feel the power. It's the Under the Ring Report. Now, here are the masters of armchair booking, John the Flesh Wound and Cousin Tom. All right, we're back. Cousin Tom with me. And uh, this week, you have got the idea of what you want to talk about. So you start the show off and then we'll uh, we'll discuss. All right. Well, a few weeks back, we had, uh, well, I guess it's been several months back, we had the tag team of uh, Big Cass and Enzo, and they had their famous breakup, which I might add had one of the better promos when the little tear ran down Enzo's face. <laughs> yeah, that was I good. Mean, that was good. That was golden. I'll, I'll give the guy props on that one. That was awesome. Um, you know, there's the breakup. Then Cass blew his knee. And then, uh, of course, everyone knows about Enzo and his backstage heat with mm-hmm. all the other guys getting kicked out of the locker room and all that stuff. But he had such a crowd reaction. Yeah. Sell so much merchandise. They had to do something with him. Mm-hmm. And then they started talking about, you know, they they pretty much squashed him. They decided to uh, move into 205 Live. And I, at the time they did it, I'm thinking, are you kidding me? You know, this guy, every time he's on Raw, you never see him wrestle. His only move you ever seen do is when Big Cass would throw him from the top rope onto mm-hmm. somebody. He had no signature move. Basically, it was his mouth, his hair, and whatever he's wearing, and his little running man dance. And that was it. it and his mic skills. That's yeah. the reason he's on Raw. That's why he sold stuff. And I have to put, you know, eat crow on this. Mm-hmm. He got people watching 205 Live. I can't True. believe it happened. True. But the, the ratings on the network are up. They, uh, I was reading the other day where the top 10 shows on the network, WrestleMania is always in the top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, 205 Live broke into the top 10 for the first time ever by them putting Enzo on there and having feuding with Neville. But you know what? It, it makes sense. And the only reason I say it makes sense is the biggest problem I've had with 205 Live. And it is because these guys are incredible athletes, all the folks on there, but you don't get to know their personalities. No, there's no story with it. Yeah, I mean, Neville, if he's even still with the company anymore. um, (laughs) I mean, who knows? But, you know, they did a great job in developing his character. Austin Aries, when he was there, that's why people liked him, because he had a character. Other than that... Who else? I mean, th- no wonder Enzo Amore is, has done so well for them. I mean, number one, the guy the guy is probably right up there, top 10 mic skills right now with guys in the WWE. Well, probably oh, top five easily. You know, he can hold his own with just about anybody. Sometimes his promos can be a little stale and a little old, but um, I'm he interested. The whole, crowd, the whole crowd chants him, just like when DX come out. You mm-hmm. know, they know line for line what he's going to say. But what I mean, so they got, you know, mm-hmm. they enjoy that. What I'm interested though with him is, are they going to respond the same way to him as they turn him heel? Because after Raw, you started to see Enzo be a real heel, and, and I'm going to be interested to see if the crowd's still behind him. Well, that's the part I like, is because not only is he a heel. But he's the old coward to heal. <laughs> yes, he all is. All talk, all talk, and then when time for action, he's squirting out of the ring, trying to get out of it. Mm-hmm. That you know, those are the heels I grew up with. Those are the heels I grew up hating. Yeah, but those are the guys that I watched. And when they did that with him, I know he's fighting an uphill battle with whatever was going on backstage. But it, it's working, and I didn't think it would work at all. I'm like, oh my gosh, they just they just sent him to the desert to die, basically. But instead, 205 Live main evented Raw two weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know on one week, you know, he dissed all the guys, especially <laughs> Neville. He's like, you never sniffed a main event match until I came. <laughs> well, he's absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true. And and you know what? The reactions they're getting and everything else is big for those guys. Because if you want eyeballs on that TV show, Enzo is going to be the guy to get people to tune in because they're getting more airtime because of him. Um, and I also think that it's helping them bring guys over that 
on the roster, what are you going to do with him on the main Raw roster? Because not only with Enzo, I think it's good, too, to see Kalisto make his move over there. Uh, a guy who's, right, yeah. who's been lost. I mean, he's, he's phenomenal. I remember watching him in NXT and, and just, you know, just going, wow, you know, he's got great moves. But on the main roster, besides a couple moments versus with Ryback and and garbage like that, oh, yeah. what else did he do? I think he had that moment where he had that little feud with Al uh, Del Rio before he left. Um, right, he and, didn't much. Yeah, you know, and that's and he, that's about and it. Really, he got that shot because Neville backed out. Yeah, so I mean, those are the things you take a look at, and you're like, well, is it the case that the main roster guys are better than what's two hundred five live? Or or why? Because there's there's got to be a reason that people don't give two rips about anyone else on that well, that thing. I think the main thing is they don't give you a reason to watch. Yeah, they think you're going to watch because of the the high flying and the uh, you know those guys. Some of them might only be four foot tall. Mm-hmm. They can do stuff I could never dream of. Over the years. We've gotten accustomed to seeing Rey Mysterio. You know, when Rey Mysterio first broke on the it scene, prime. everybody was just like, oh, my God, did you see what that guy did? Well, you know, now guys are doing all kinds of stuff, and you're not getting the awe factor like you used to because well, you're used to seeing it. Well, and the other thing, too, and, I mean, I I kind of did one of those back, just kind of thinking back. Um, when WCW first brought out cruiserweights, um, I loved it, but it wasn't just because these guys did moves that were incredible. Even though some of these guys couldn't speak English, they they yeah, gave them they mm-hmm. gave them personality. I mean, La Parker was my favorite of all time in WCW. I mean, that dude, like for Chairman. the longest, yeah. And you know what? Before Vince Russo, he didn't speak, and it didn't matter because he was just awesome. Uh, but they had many wrestlers like that, and. A lot of these guys, I don't know, man, just don't well, don't seem you, to do anything for me. Here's 205 in a nutshell for me. You have all those guys who are amazing talents. Yeah. And when you watch their matches, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't believe the guy did, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like Neville's finisher, the, what does he call it, the blue arrow or red arrow or whatever yeah. arrow it is. Yeah. It's an amazing move. The only the only thing I can remember off two hundred five live in the last four months is the horrible, God's awful worst angle I've ever seen in my life was I think it was Noah Dar and uh, <laughs> I can't remember the other guy was having the love triangle and the whole time they're wrestling on the jumbotron screaming don't put the phone down don't put the phone down. and the, the whole match is her yelling yeah. That was the worst thing. Well, and that's the only thing I remember out of 205 Live is and, that. And that's the problem, you want people to And watch. that's the problem is that the people booking that show don't understand who their audience is. They aren't tuning in to get another hour of Raw. That's the big problem. So mm-hmm. crap like that, stupid little angles here and there don't work. They just want a wrestling show. They really do. I'd say I would argue that the uh, the women's uh, wrestling tournament yeah. that they had was a better show and better produced than the 205 Live mm-hmm. because they did backstories and all the girls. They give you a reason to want to watch, a reason to root for them. Yeah. You know, it built from there. And you with got JR. Guys, you know, I know one guy comes out with a little, like, 80s video game arcade music. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah. I don't really care. <laughs> Well, and I get it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You don't know a whole lot about their stories. And I know they did the tournament and they talked them out a little bit. But when they did the show, there's a lot of them that they don't have great personalities either. I mean, that's I don't know if they've been working with them or what, but a lot of them don't have that personality. And then they trot them out on Raw. And you know what? For the most part, click, go get a break. I mean, seriously, <laughs> there was a point there. Yeah. I mean, you knew how hard they were pushing, and this was back when Austin Aries and Neville were wrestling. Every week, they brought them out, and they brought other guys hoping to give them the rub. But it's like, right. none of these guys have any personality. I don't care. Um, and, and the guys that do have personality don't even get enough time to, to see and show who they are. So Enzo's going to be the same way. I hate to say it, but it's going to be two main guys on that show. 
That's who they're going to base this whole show on, and everybody else is going to yeah. be fillers. That's what it is. So depending what happens with Neville, I don't know. No one knows what's up with that. But it's probably going to be Kalisto and, and Enzo battling now for the next four or five months. And these rest right. of these guys are going to be fill material. Well, I hope they uh, I hope they take what they've got with Enzo and and branch off from that and build some more feuds and get some more things going to give people a reason to watch because I mean it's entertaining when you watch them. I mean they're fun to watch, but I just need a reason to watch. I agree and it's funny too cuz when they when they put him on there and broke him up with Cass I was kind of torn because I think Enzo needs someone like that to stay on the roster. But I might be in the in the minority, but I think Big Cass is a waste of freaking talent. He can't talk on the mic. He's just a big dude, and Vince loves big dudes. But other than that, yeah. nothing. Give me Strowman. I don't need him. I know when they broke up, the, the thing was, you know, you're a mouthpiece, and, and you've never done anything, and you're holding me back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But then when they break up, it's like, well, you know what? The mouthpiece was the draw that got people to watch you. <laughs> True. They kind of forget you know, that, did, don't they? Yeah. So did you just punch your meal ticket in the mouth <laughs> and now you're going to starve? He probably will. Um, but other than that, I don't, I'm just trying to think where I could see Enzo going after this. Um, you know, he may well, sell a ton just, of t-shirts uh, and stuff, see. but. How long before 205 gets canceled, you know, because the ratings, it isn't pulling in the money that it's worth. Um, I can't see him as a, a, a singles competitor. You know who he reminds me of as a singles competitor? Who? Spike Dudley. Hmm. In the a way, he, the way he wrestles, yeah. But, I mean, Mike-wise, yeah. he's in another world. Right. Well, I'm not talking Mike-wise. I'm talking about just wrestling-wise. Wrestling-wise, Spike Dudley was just like ragdoll city yeah well you know what here's the thing if if i was the guy in charge of doing something with enzo amore i wouldn't have him wrestle he's not a good wrestler he's not entertaining at all wrestling bring back a manager give him a couple guys that suck on the mic can't talk worth a shit let him be their mouthpiece let him be one of those you know kind of heel managers that gets involved and causes problems but he would be the guy putting them over. And I think that would be more beneficial down the line than throwing him in 205 with guys that are way more superior than him, no matter what. And, and sometimes it's very obvious, and that's what I think kind of hurts that show. Yeah, well, I wouldn't even mind. I like that idea. I wouldn't even mind them keeping the title on him and having him come out with other guys and then they wrestle as he's ringside and then he interferes yeah. or, or talks or, you know, having a little faction, they got enough guys in there. They can have a faction. Mm -hmm. They just need someone, you know, for every yin, there's gotta be a yang. So there's gotta be somebody who can, there, there's no one there that's going to match him. No, that's on the mic. No, they not at all. Someone who can, can at least competitively keep up or be, or at least be compelling enough to try to keep up with him. Yeah. Well, and the problem too. If they could do that, yeah, then you might have something. Well, because the sad thing about him is, he is like he's the rock on the mic. He's that type of of charismatic guy that has just the perfect skills that he can just pretty much get into a verbal war with anyone. But right. he doesn't have the build. He doesn't have the makeup to do everything. I mean, if if that guy was built and had those mic skills, oh. he'd be a main eventer he in that right now absolutely he, he'd be doing whatever he wanted to be doing mm -hmm. he wouldn't say anything about it but you know. he's gonna sell a lot of merchandise there's tons of little kids with the enzo more goofy ass hair um running yeah. around with the leopard stuff and every person when he comes out is going to still do that catchphrase but it's also going to get to that point unless he reinvents himself it's going to become a joke We've watched some of these other guys who've had catchphrases that have been over for a little while. I Zack Ryder. Um, you know, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, there was a point where Zack Ryder was over big. And, and, and I have a feeling that's what's going to happen with him, especially with him on 205 Live more than anything. 
I think he's going to just go there. He'll be big for a little while, and then he's just going to go away. You won't even hear about him anymore. He'll just disappear. Well, it, he has reinvented himself. This is the first go around with the the heel, the chicken heel. So we'll yep. see what happens from there. You know, Zack Ryder, he was that's one guy that got himself over, and then the uh, the big institution came in and kind of just stole it out from underneath. Decided him. he really wasn't uh, <laughs> worthy of being over was pretty much what happened to him. Like, um, you know, they're like, well, uh, you use this YouTube thing. That's a good idea. We think we'll just take your show and do yeah. it yourself. <laughs> and you know what? That's part of the problem you run into when that when they see something that works and they see a guy that truthfully had no business being over, they'll pretty yep. much do that to do whatever they can. So yep. I don't know. All right, man. Well, there we go. Thanks a lot for talking about Enzo. And uh, we'll get together next cool. week to uh, talk a little more. Parting shots. Right, don't be a- don't be a cup of haters. Hello, wrestling fans. This is the Honky Tonk Man, the greatest WWF Intercontinental Champion of all time, and you're listening to Under the Ring Report. Follow the Under the Ring Report on Twitter at UTRR Podcast. You can subscribe to the Under the Ring Report on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, or visit UnderTheRingReport.com. Thanks for listening to the Under the Ring Report.